Hi, this is Melanie for the Perdaisy channel. I'm here to do a review of a film that was released only on Netflix called Love Per Square Foot. This is just a delightful, sweet, romantic comedy. And I love that Netflix is releasing original material like this. So maybe it wouldn't have gotten a big release, a uh, big Bollywood release, because maybe it doesn't have the most well-known actors in it, but it's really sweet. And I just, you know, I love that they're doing original material. It's directed by someone who's more known for his acting, Anand Tiwari. So this is a directorial debut of a feature length film. He was an assistant director also in films like Barfi, and I believe he did some web shorts, although I'm not sure. But anyway, he's an actor's director, you know, because he's an actor himself. Vicky Koshal plays the romantic lead, the hero. He is Sanjay, and his father is a railway announcer retiring, and so they live in a tiny, tiny, tiny little apartment all together. And then... He works as some sort of IT person in a big bank. And and our heroine is Adjirar Dar, who evidently won some sort of beauty contest, but I was actually quite impressed. She was a good actress in this. So the opening montage was really great because it showed some scenes of Mumbai, some of the iconic ones that I'm used to seeing, but also some unusual little touches and t uh, places that I had never seen before. So that was just fun in and of itself, just that opening credit montage showing me some sides of the city that I had not seen before in a Hindi film. The, the whole setup of the film is that... Uh, they both work together but have never met because they work on separate floors. Karina is the name of the character, Karina de Souza, so that's very important because she is Christian. And and her mother is played by the always fantastic Ratna Patak. I mean, I always just, she is a delight in any movie. And their apartment is so run down, like anytime the person above does anything, all sorts of plaster dust falls on their head, which is a riot. When the film begins, both Karina and Sanjay are in other relationships. Karina is sort of engaged or there's an understanding with a very nice Christian boy that her father, her mother approves of. And Sanjay though is in an illicit relationship with his boss who is engaged to another guy played by Aruna Day Singh, who he's just always great at sort of playing these mildly menacing villainous character. Here he's not really a villain, but he just, he has just sort of this threatening look about him. I've seen him in a lot of other films where he just kind of, he's really good at playing these supporting parts. Alan Krita Sahai plays Rashi, the very self-centered boss that Sanjay is having an affair with. Both Sanjay and Karina's dream is to move out of their current housing situations and to have their own home. They just dream and dream and dream of it. So they see it, both see an ad in the paper for a government housing scheme. And this was something that I don't have any familiarity with what this was really all about. But I believe there's some sort of lottery system, but you have to be married. And it was all quite complicated. And then I, you know, my husband was sitting next to me for that part. And he's like, housing scheme? Because if you said the scheme here in America, that would mean it was something really shady and dodgy. Not that it was a government program. So they, they meet cute at a wedding. That whole scene was adorable. Do people in India really do the chicken dance? <laughs> because that's what they do on this like elaborate chicken dance number. And I was like, are you serious? We have subjected you guys to that. <laughs> I mean, that's something we do like at bar mitzvahs and whatever. I had no idea. Anyway, they just have such a meet cute on the dance floor. I like the whole setup. Like he goes in for a loan and so she's the one that's rejected his loan because she's like, on your salary, you cannot get a $5 million loan. They scheme together to try to get one of these lottery apartments and like only if they get it, will they get married? And they just both have this dream of doing that. Then what happens is through various funny scenes, both of them become unentangled from their significant others 
and they start to fall in for each other and then complications happen. The first half was just absolutely delicious to watch them falling for each other and all of the things that happen and the crazy families. I didn't even mention that uh, Kashal's mother is played by Bria Patak, who, you know, I loved in Ram Leela. I mean, here she's just playing, you know, a caricature kind of mother role, but I still love to see her on screen just the same way that I love to see Ratna Patak too. There's this, this religious difference they end up, of course, winning the lottery and they have to have the parents meet. So they're falling for each other. Complications happen. Of course, you know, there's a happy ending. But the second half just didn't quite pop along. It's like you had this awesome setup and then everything that happened to finally get to the end wasn't all as equally great. The script wasn't as well. And also just because the Rashi character, the one that Vicky is having this affair with, is she's just such a sort of one note self-centered villain. And I don't know if that's just the way she was written, where it was written on the page or just the way this actress, what she did with it. I don't know. Those scenes didn't all come off quite as well, but I still really enjoyed it. It was an, a very pleasurable time pass, and I would highly recommend if you enjoy romantic films, you know, we've got a new one here on Netflix. Give it a try. And I thought uh, the young actor, Vicky Koshal, was really the standout of the movie. I thought he was particularly good. I don't really remember him looking at his filmography. It says that he was in Bombay Velvet as an inspector or something. I don't really remember. I have not seen Udon, which evidently he is the lead. But what I was excited to see is that one of his upcoming films is that there's going to be another Bombay Talkies film and that Karen Johar is participating and Vicky is going to be in that segment, in that short of Bombay Talkies too. So that's really exciting. I didn't know that there was another one in the works. So I'd like to see more of this young actor. And if something like this Netflix film gives some of these young actors and actresses more of a platform to show off what they can do so they can get even bigger and better work, that's, that's really awesome. I'm excited. Netflix here in the U.S., the film director that did the film that we, uh, my husband and I, were executive producers this film, How to Tell You're a Douchebag. Tahir Jeter and I have talked, and he's just like, the amount of money that Netflix is spreading around Hollywood is just amazing. They're wanting to create all this original content. And what's exciting to me is it seems like they're really starting to do the same thing in India. And this is just some of our first taste of what's to come, and I think it's awesome because I, I can't wait to see more original content like this that I can watch in the comfort of my own home. So that was awesome. I do recommend this film if you like romantic comedies. I thought it was above average, especially the first half was really, really enjoyable watching these two fall in love. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments if you had a chance to see it. Uh, like this video, please share it. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at PerdaisyYT. I hope you're already subscribing, but please subscribe to the Perdaisy channel. And if you press the bell, then you'll get a notification whenever we have a new trailer reaction or video review.